on this rainy Sunday. Please stand as we worship our Lord and Savior. Psalm 122.1 says, I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. How, what a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord today.
Someday we're going to be in a place of perfection called heaven, God. In the meantime, we are aliens, strangers, uh, just passing through. Our citizenship, Lord, is in your kingdom. And God, we know that we await a Savior, Lord. It's, there's going to be a great sonic boom, a great trumpet call, Lord, and we're going to all be gathered together. But for right now, God, you have got wonderful work for us to do. And we have joy this morning, the joy of our salvation. We have peace that passes all understanding. We sense your presence and the work of your Holy Spirit in our lives and in our families and in our church and in our community, God. Thank you for the great things, Lord, that you are doing. We want to be a part of that. We join you, God, in what you are doing. And we pray that your Holy Spirit would be able to move and not be grieved or quenched in any way as we gather together just to lift your name up in praise. We worship you, we adore you, we love you because you first loved us. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer. In your name I pray, amen. Good morning, it's good to see you. Just want to remind you that next Sunday we're going to be celebrating the Lord's Supper uh, as a family and uh, so you uh, be preparing your hearts for that uh, beautiful time that we will have next Sunday. How are you doing this morning? You braved the weather, okay, and I'm glad you did. And uh, I, when I walked out the door to go to Waterburger, that's where my class has been uh, meeting, um, and I saw the sky had busted open since I got here, I thought, well, it's not going to be a high attendance day today, is it? Uh, but anyway, it's good to have the core competency group with us today. And uh, anyway, it's good to see you. And so, so excited about what God is doing in our lives and sharing that uh, with you. I know we have guests today. I ask you if you would. There's a spot right on the back of our worship guide. We'd love to have your mailing address and your email address so that we can let you know about future events. Let's stand together and greet each other and greet our guests. Let's do that right now.
today that the battle is God's. When David went to kill Goliath, God is the one who took that little stone and that stone hit that hit Goliath right here in the head. God, he is in control. Praise the Lord. We want to help you worship today. I want you to think about those battles that you're facing this week. And know that it, they do belong to God. Every victory, we're going to lay it at his feet. I want us to do that right now. Will you go with us to the Lord in prayer? I'm going to give us some time to pray on your own. If you want to come down to the altar, go ahead and come and pray. If you want to stand at, right at your place. Let's go to the Lord. Give him our battles. There he is. Let's pray together. Just lift up everyone here today. All of us, God, we have battles in our lives. God, help us to remember that you fight our battle for us, God. We come to you today. We pray. I pray for peace, God. I pray for peace on our people. God, I ask for healing among our people heal those who are sick. And Lord, in Jesus' name, I lift up the lost people in our community, country, in the world, Lord Jesus. God, we cry out to you for the salvation of people. God, we cry out to you and ask for the boldness to stand up, Jesus, and to tell the good news of the gospel. Jesus, you have been so good to us. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.
Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. And first, we thank you for the, the rain you've given us and the break from a little bit of the heat. And Lord, we just ask that you'll continue to bless. And Lord, I do thank you for the blessings that you've given me over my life and for many of the folks in here, Lord. I just thank you for their presence. Lord, as we come now and collect your offerings, Lord, I ask that you will use it for your glory. And Lord, guide and direct our church, guide our leadership, Lord, Be especially with Brother Mike as he speaks this morning and help each one of us to take what he says and to apply it as needed in our lives, Lord. Lord, I ask you'll help each one of us to look at things in this world more through your eyes, Lord, and to help us understand. And Lord, guide and direct, be with our nation. I just ask now these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss. The father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen. Hallelujah. Whew. Man. Mm, mm, mm. Great things are happening, aren't they? God is blessing us. Let me just tell you a couple of things that I know that you don't know. How about that? I'm not going to mention a name on this first story because I'm hoping he'll share his testimony with you one of these days, but I got a phone call from one of our young men that are part of our church family. Uh, he's in his early 20s, and uh, the conversation, you know, kind of went like this, that he admitted that he had been running from the Lord and uh, that he had not been living right, not doing things that he was saved and had been baptized uh, for a long time, but just knew that he was not going in the right direction and his life, he felt like he had no purpose, that he was just kind of, you know, the life had just become the daily grind of, of work and, and going home and, and uh, getting in trouble, and that was basically it. And a friend at work uh, who was a, living a different life than his, was living for the Lord, said, you know, I've read this great book and you need to read it. It's called The Purpose Driven Life. So he gave him a copy of The Purpose Driven Life. So he read it. He did it as the book says you're supposed to do within 40 days, okay? So he read the book in 40 days, and God radically changed his life. He repented of his sin, okay? He, he let go of, of things in his life that were going in, in the wrong direction. I mean, he just basically surrendered to the Lord, and my goodness, his life turned on a dime. And I mean, this man, young man, is on fire for the Lord. Isn't that great? I mean, that, that's the kind of things that uh, God is at work and that God is doing because we are a part of a movement of God that can only be inspired by the Holy Spirit. You know, many of you have told me that at one time or another, that when we worship together, you sense the Holy Spirit. He's moving. He's working. Jesus is changing lives. 
I want us to remember our mission, the vision that God has given us. We are to engage, which basically means that God intersects our lives with the lost, with the unchurched. I did a wedding last night. There was about 30 people there. And after the wedding, our plan was, we didn't really know anyone there, but our plan was that we were going to just leave and not stay for the reception and get on home, you know. But the sky busted open when it was time to go. We had no umbrella, kind of a distance to go to get to our car. And so we were just kind of there and everything, and we kind of said, well, that looks like some good barbecue and uh, ribs they've got there. Let's just go ahead and stay. But you know what? God sent that rain so that we would stay because we end up sitting at this table with this young couple from Fort Worth. And this young couple, uh, they both claim to be believers. Both had been in uh, you know, different churches in their lifetime, but they had some bitterness towards the church you know different things had gone wrong with their experience with the church and so anyway we spent the whole reception you know telling about you and about what God's doing in our church and how we wish they lived out here in the country in the sticks with us instead of in big Fort Worth you know and they could come to church with us but all that to say that was God's plan all along for us to intersect with that couple possibly be an encouragement to them plant a little seed so that maybe they'll uh, get on with what they need to be doing God uh, intersects us with other people for a reason and we're to be engaging those people with the gospel of Jesus Christ and then we're to equip you know there were eight children that were saved as a part of our children's ministry this summer uh, kind of came together mostly through vacation Bible school. Some of it started in camp. We baptized uh, five of those that week. We've got a few more that are going to be baptized. Well, we don't just stop there. Those children need to, to come to understand what it means to be a follower of Jesus. So we'll be discipling them and helping them to understand how to read the Bible for themselves, how to pray, how to be a witness, why it's important to be a part of a church family and things like that. And then finally, we are to empower. And what that means is, is that every one of us has the Holy Spirit inside of us, and you don't need the pastor to script for you your spiritual journey. I believe that you have everything you need, and you are equipped in order to allow the Holy Spirit to do what he wants to do through you which will in turn bring you back full circle where God will be using you to engage with others to help them come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. It would be so easy to be content where we are but I don't believe that that's what's in our heart and this church has a legacy of doing great things for God. I want you to look with me at two verses in the New Testament in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. Let's stand for the reading of God's Word. It says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more, then all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. You know, the context of these two verses in the previous three chapters of Ephesians is a discussion of the gospel. Who Jesus is, what he has done, and what this means to us. 
before the foundation of the earth, God already knew that everyone that he created would rebel. And he already knew that Jesus Christ would die to set us free from our rebellion. We were enemies of God, and now we are children of God. We were dead in sin, and now we are alive in Jesus Christ. This passage is the crescendo in all of this. What is it saying? Well, I think the first thing that it says is that God wants us to do even greater things. God is always active and busy, and he puts callings on our lives. Think of the incredible things that God has done in your life. Salvation. Maybe he has healed you physically, emotionally, spiritually. Maybe your marriage was headed in the wrong direction and he miraculously turned it in the right direction. I want you to know that God is not done yet. This scripture answers the question, what is God able to do? It says in many of your translations, more than we can ask or imagine. Now, in the original language here, it is a hyper-demonstrative uh, verbiage here. Three Greek words are compounded together to make one word. Paul didn't say here he's able to do more. He didn't even say he can do more. He said he is able to do far more abundantly or immeasurably. As a matter of fact, I like the um, Amplified translation. Listen to verse 20 in it. It says, Now to him who, by in consequences of the action of his power that is at work within us, is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly, far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our wildest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. You see, in that verse, there's both quantity and quality. What the Apostle Paul is doing here is he's making an attempt in words to describe the impossible. It's kind of like seeing a sunrise or a sunset. Sometimes, how do you describe that? Or if, if you've ever been to the mountains of Colorado or the mountains of Tennessee, to, to be able to somehow describe how awesome that is. The Apostle Paul is trying to say that God is, is, is beyond awesome. He is, is able to do things that you cannot even fathom more than we can ask or even think. Let that sink in for just a moment. Because secondly, God, His ability to act far exceeds our ability to ask. That's what it says here. Now to Him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. His doing is far beyond our ability even to dream. I'm not talking about a blank check, name it and claim it. I'm not talking about a long Santa Claus list here, but it is an actual open invitation. It's about glorifying God. It's about partnering with Him to be His missionary. He can do 
all this through you and through you, through all of us collectively together. Do you believe it? Amen. And how should this change us? I mean, how should we be praying? We pray, Lord, help me have a good day today. Jesus is saying here, I can do a whole lot more than just give you a good day. Don't settle for a good day. We pray, God, bless my family. <laughs> Jesus says, I can do abundantly, exceedingly more than just bless your family. Imagine big. Imagine more. God wants to do more in our lives than we even have the ability to ask. Don't settle for one neighbor that you'd like to see come to know Jesus. How about claiming your entire neighborhood for Jesus? I want everybody that lives in my neighborhood to know Jesus and to love him supremely. Wouldn't that be awesome? Or how about asking God for Gilmer for his glory? Let's deepen our body of faith and widen the reality for the sake of the gospel. By the way, I'm dreaming of two services on Sunday morning. How about you? We can do that, can't we? My Bible study class, we lost our room to the Texas Baptist men, which, by the way, don't we appreciate everything that they have done these last three weeks? I mean, incredible. <laughs> So we moved to Whataburger. We liked it so much, I think we're going to stay. So I want everyone that comes to Whataburger on Sunday morning for Jesus. How about that? And we need some small groups in your living room, by the way. What a great opportunity. Just do a Bible study in your living room and invite your neighbors. They might come to your living room long before they'll show up here. Just an idea that I might suggest to you for your thinking, something good is going to happen. Something abundantly and more than we can imagine or think. Then thirdly, I want you to see in this scripture how he will do this. According to the power at work in us. Look again at our text. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. Jesus doesn't ask you to do one thing according to your ability. As a matter of fact, we're in trouble. If you're depending on my ability or yours, this is a reference to the Holy Spirit of God inside of us. Inside of you and inside of me, we have everything we need. And He wants to work through you. As a matter of fact, the language here, the original language in the Greek, is in the present active. It's an ongoing and active work. From the moment that you are saved until the day you go through graduation exercises, we are to live our lives in glory to God and we are to intersect the people that God puts in our path. The Bible says we're to buy up those opportunities and let Him work in our life. And all you got to do is just sit back and let Him do it. Are you with me? Power. The word power here, it's used so many times in the New Testament. It's the same word. It's a reference to the power that resurrected Jesus from the grave. Every follower of Jesus has this power. And we were created for more than just the American dream. Beware of safe religion. Beware of convenience. Beware 
of focus on just your career. Many play it safe, and then you just check the box. I went to church. Ask God to release the resurrected power of Jesus Christ in your life. If you're single, God wants to use you for His glory. If you're parents, we need men and women of God who will champion the gospel of Jesus Christ until their dying day. Empty nester, don't waste your life. This is the greatest years of missionary work that you've got. You've got more flexibility, more experience, more wisdom, and more resources than you have ever had. Live for the glory of God and spin yourself. Philippians 2.17 says this, But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. Students, be a world changer. Ask God to give you your school. Let's see him do miracles that only he can get credit for. And then finally, this is all about the glory of God. Verse 21 in our text says, To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. It's all about glorifying his name. It's all about praising him for all eternity. I mean, you and I, we celebrate so many things thousands of things in our lifetime, birthdays and anniversaries and graduations and, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff, all of that's going to perish. Who can even remember anymore way back when? But one million years from now, the church of Jesus Christ will be giving glory to Jesus for what? He has done through you in His power. All you've got to do is ask yourself, what are you willing to give? In every way, time, resources, where are you willing to go? Or are you willing to go across the street? or even just across the hallway. Pray that God will use all of us beyond what we can think or imagine. Let's let God be God, and let's watch the great things that are happening. What a privilege it is to be a part of what God is doing. First Baptist Gilmer, right here. Ask God for more. Imagine more. You will be glad you did. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, every good and perfect gift comes from you. We are alive today. There is breath in our body because you have called us to be your ambassadors. Help us, Lord Jesus, to have our eyes focused on you, the author and the perfecter of our faith, your kingdom and your righteousness. Lord, you promise us that when you do, that you will give us everything that we need, that we'll have the Holy Spirit inside of us. Help us to look for those opportunities to engage others with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, to celebrate the victories of 
repentance, and conviction. And help us, Lord, to persevere and to stay steady on the visions and the dreams and the callings that you give us. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do. Lord, if there's any person in this room that does not know you, Savior, I pray that they would cry out to you. Your word says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Thank you, God, for that opportunity. In your name I pray. Amen. I'm going to invite you to come and continue to worship. You come now and pray at this altar. You can come now and become a part of this church family. We'll talk to you about your baptism. Let's worship together. Have faith in God.